Creative people are everywhere you turn. When you turn on your phone, when you're on the streets, there's definitely somebody looking to make you happy, to inform you, or to just show you something bizarre that would get your attention. Today, we'll be talking about African creatives and the law. Are royalties, intellectual properties, and other laws protecting creatives fully functional in Africa? This is State of the Culture brought to you by Izesa and Speak Asan, the African language learning app. If you would like to learn any African language, we have a couple of them there. So you can download the app from your Google or iOS Play Store and get learning today. Now I always do this with beautiful ladies beside me. I don't know, I, I feel like I made you guys pause for a bit. You can <laughs> shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> My name is Angiatin Justina. I'm your host, and up till today, I thought I was the only one that liked a little bit of red, you know, in some things I do, like, i.e. my hair, the earring, but apparently, this, oh, I don't know what's happening here. I don't know. This one, she's like, you have, you've seen the emoji, right? Mm. The emoji of the lady dancing in that, mm, that's so exactly. So this is, she came in for mm. the show today, yeah, and then you took a little bit of that yeah, at the I top just, part. I, I just, <laughs> Anyways, let's get on to the introductions. Yes, you yeah, you My should name go is first. Kiliki. And the beautiful guest we have here today, the <laughs> second lady we are having yeah. this season, True. you know, we're, we're usually very excited about. We need to be keeping it green because we can be giving them Exactly, like award. cheers and... <laughs> okay. So Sorry, we have on. to come back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. True, because yeah. you don't have any drink And now. when you come back, we now do a scene that we have not seen before. Yeah. I don't worry, yeah. I can act. We'll act. <laughs> no, I love that. Anyways. So why our beautiful lady in red here is an authority on this topic is because she is an entertainment lawyer and specializes in intellectual property law. Also, she's a member, you know, I have to, you know, read it here, of the Association for the Protection of Intellectual Property. I hope I got that right. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so if you'd like me to say your name, I can't know. You know, I do it all the time. Well, I, I can introduce myself. My okay. name is Temlari Jane Gapsiso. Oh. Wow. Yes, so yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, Chamba from Adamawa State. Yes, and you know, we have a tradition here. This is brought to you by our African language learning app. So okay. we like to okay. discover new languages. So every single right. person brings something new. Yes, right. So exactly. just give us a greeting. You know, anybody look at your camera and just say, Hey, all right. Um, Anna Kenya, you met them, Larry. <laughs> okay, what did you hear? I just <laughs> said, hello, how are you? My name is Tem Larry. Okay, okay. And that's Chamba. That's yes. a language from Adamawa. Good, it's don't worry, we'll Kenyan. come back. Kenya, right? Well, specifically, I'm Chamba Daka. There are like multiple um, dialects. So I'm not just Chamba, I'm Chamba Daka. There's Chamba Leku and the others. Not just Nigeria, by the way. Mm, yeah, true. Oh, when Cameroon, I, I think I remember that. Togo, we're also so in Ghana. <laughs> Well, I mean, I landed in Nigeria, so I'm Nigerian. Oh, wow. Yeah, true. Sad. Wait, is but it even if, no, it's not. Because when you look at, okay, it looks like I'm looking down on them. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, this is Africa. And of course, we like to discover new languages, like I said. So it's good to have you from Chamba. You're the first. And maybe you seem to want to talk about your culture too as well. So maybe when we're having a, yeah. an episode on that, we'll have your drink ready, you know, for the toast yeah. for being our first lady. All right. Anyways, yeah. let's get right into discussing about African creatives. First of all, I'd like to ask you beautiful ladies, what, first of all, let me, let me just speak a little bit about the creative industry in Africa. Creativity is basically, you know, a person's thoughts being, you know, realized, yeah. being fully actualized and, putting a value on it as well. Mm. How do I put it? Your thoughts translated into maybe something solid or something that can be seen or read and a value is added to it. For instance, a book comes from the mind, someone's stories, and then it's being sold. That's where you give value. And the value is not just in the money. The value is in what you're you know, impacting on whomever is going to read yes. your book. So that's what creativity is about. Now, what falls under the creative industry in Nigeria? We have the media and entertainment. We have the arts, that is the performing arts, um, mu movies and music. We also have um, visual arts as well. We have the you know, paintings. And then we also have 
you know, it's actually a large yeah, industry. Very broad. Yeah. Very, very broad. It's so almost I want impossible to list every single Every single thing. thing. Yeah, and that's yeah, the thing yeah, with the creative yeah. industry. It's it's sometimes it's intangible. It's, you can't really put a hold on it and it's so mm. much. Yeah. But I want to ask you now, what what creative industry are you most attracted to when it comes to mm. yeah. For me, it's books and music, so I can't really pick, but I can't pick, but let's say books and music, but if I pick one, then the books mm. that I'm most in, I'm drawn to. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, you're a bookworm. Oh, yeah. You love a lot of books. Yeah. What, what book are you oh, currently reading right now? Books. Um, Beyond My Dreams by Jumaki Adono, currently. Mm. Yeah, and it's very interesting. And shock, I think every book person loves the smell of books. Yes, know? actually. Yes. Ouch. <laughs> okay, so you can go ahead and tell me the yeah, creative so, part that you so that I actually like anything that has stories. It does, it's not really... Um, restricted to just like specific sub industries mm. so i like movies because of the stories mm, i like wow. um, music that tells stories not just any kind of music mm. and definitely fiction mm. Mm. Cool. yes and specifically i like hard copies sorry that's no. me that's not very healthy for me anyway and it's just different because I get to highlight. Okay, brand. so this book ones are, you know, <laughs> about to turn this into a book Very show. But mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about, let me, you know, talk a little about the history as well of the creative industry in Africa. So it dates back to 500 um, BC to 280. Mm. It is mm. something that has been here for a while. When you look at when art had value, think back to before colonization, when mm. um, the Benin Kingdom was sacked. Hmm. You know, when they resisted um, the colonial masters, but then they fell. You know, they had a lot of artwork that were, that were taken, a lot of artworks that were taken from here. That's what, that is what is being called the looted art currently. And some of them have not even been recovered, and some of mm -hmm. them are being looted. We actually had a topic on this on our Instagram Live. So this shows that we have had arts, you know, that we created, and they had value. And some of these colonial masters came and saw this value, and they took it along with them when they were going back. So we've had that as well. And this is basically the history of the creative industry. From the fine arts, before people started storytelling, people started singing, and then acting in movies. That's basically the history of the creative industry. And when you look at the contribution, another reason why we're talking about this is because of the contribution that it brings, you know, into the economy as of last year the creative industry is said to be the the second the second largest employer of labor wow. yeah behind agriculture of course mm. so it employs over 4.2 million people currently mm. and you know there are projections about it in 2020 as well even when you look at the the amount of um, money that is contributed to the gdp from books from music, especially mm. Afrobeats going yeah. viral right now. True. From music, from um, movies, with the streaming on Netflix, yeah. you see that we're actually pulling in quite a lot to the GDP. There's they're actually fixed numbers, you know, but I don't want us to get into that. <laughs> but I want to ask you, Kilechi, so I've talked about this. How did, you know, to the best of your knowledge and research, how did the creative industry grow so much compared to like the start where Basically, nobody even knew about yeah. African art. How did they evolve? I feel that um, digital, that's digitization, actually had a huge role to play, majorly, like majorly, because you know that we moved from the era where things were moved just hand to hand, physical, to now an era where things are moved digitally. That's soft copy. Yeah. Like you can be in Nigeria and then it's over there across seas and nations but in those days for it to actually go there you have to ship do different manual labels but now it's very easy so i feel the digital world actually has had it has a huge role to play in this game and also we can actually actually attribute this to the covid yeah. because think about it covid made things spoil like covid made people know like the what of this digital era that we are currently in it made people that didn't even see value now see value in it so i feel that that's one of the major things that actually just skyrocketed the african industry creative industry so far yeah so you what do you think about it too how what well um i like the fact that she mentioned the covid 
um, pandemic because at that time, a lot of people that were not always on your phone, especially people that were really busy, um, mm. always on the move because of the nature of the job, there were a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people were forced to adapt, had to change. So it was like, it was a question of how can I still do my job properly without having to leave my house? And they found a lot of tools. They found a lot of softwares. And I think that really opened people's eyes. And we're like, oh, OK, I think I'm funny. I have uh, the time I spend on the road going to work and coming back. I can it's save it right now. Yeah. So like subconsciously, so people realized, OK, they had more time to themselves. Mm -hmm. And it kind of forced the creativity out. I I'm, I guess that it's partly due to the fact that a lot of people were bored. Yes. And depression, things like depression were like, setting in so yeah. they needed something to distract themselves with and their phones were obviously the first things to look to and i think yes it's really spoiled the whole um, creativity thing okay so still on creativity now we have a lot of, like you said a lot of people are being creative somebody walking or going about their daily activity is now content yeah. and people actually running to see that content <laughs> yeah actually <laughs> once, weirdly enough once upon a time that was you had to get that on dish like to watch reality shows mm -hmm. but now just turn on your social media anyone at all and then you see that mm -hmm. so now these people that are creating i want us to talk about the laws protecting because anything mm. like as a creative person i have you know when you create something you have this kind of Shall I say, you feel yourself like, ah, let me create this thing. Mm. And you want to protect it with everything you've got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know that legally there are ways that creative people can be protected. So yes. I know I want you to explain practically what they are. I know a couple of them are the, um, actually it's a body of laws, intellectual property law. Yeah. And then there are the acts under it, which are the copyrights, the patents, mm -hmm. the design. Mm -hmm. So could you tell us practically, what can you protect under these laws? Okay, um, I like the fact that you mentioned that this creative, creative fruits or yeah. results of creativity are now open to protection. I think one of the reasons why is because initially people used to see fiscal goods as the only things worth protecting because mm -hmm. that's what they could see, that's what they could use. But now that people are creating other things, it's now, okay, I need, I need a sense of exclusivity. So the idea of intellectual property protection is not necessarily to have something and keep it to have like just one copy of something and keep it in your house yeah. because um, what intellectual property law protects is the right to multiply it mm -hmm. the right to use it in a certain way not necessarily the right to have it alone because most times when you monetize um, intellectual property what you're doing is you're multiplying it saying that i'm the only one that has the right to give the license to you to use it in a certain way mm -hmm. so um the laws that govern that are divided in depending on the nature of the intellectual property mm -hmm. so if what you're trying to protect is the brand identity like your logo or even maybe like is a, this an exactly mm -hmm. the, your name the, your trade name or maybe even a sound that is associated with your brand so what protects that is called the trademark it's um, the law itself is the trademark act. If it's a scientific invention, then you think patent. If it's an industrial design, for instance, the design of these tables, if you're the first, if it was original, if you can um, satisfy all the requirements, then that's industrial design. Then for the very popular ones that we all know, copyright. So basically, this show the video of this show is protected by copyright, yeah. almost every kind yeah. of conceivable content you can come up with, regardless of how weird or <laughs> <laughs> strange it may seem. Mm. Actually, there are a lot of weird content, <laughs> but we enjoy it. So yeah, so just for people to remember, what I say is copyright content, copyright content. So they're like CO, CO. Mm. That way you remember yeah. that if, I, if I'm creating something that is um, most likely entertaining or educating, then chances are it's copyright. Then if it's going to be scientific in nature, chances it's are it's, it's patent. Okay. If it's going to be about my business identity or even my identity as a person, because some these days brands Trademark are not just my name. Yeah. exactly brands are not just about yeah, um, name, registered yeah. businesses, but also as for people also. So yeah. when I think when you think of brands, you think of um, trademark. Yeah. I hope that's clear. Mm. Yeah, actually it's, it very is very clear. clear. Very so let me just very cool. to this other lady. <laughs> yes, girl. Okay, let's talk about it. Because she mentioned a couple of them, mm -hmm. rightly. And we need to look at the effectiveness. Because in Nigeria, we've seen this thing where, of course, it's there, it's there in paper. I'm so sorry. Of course, it's there in paper. But when it comes to translating it practically, how effective do you feel like these laws are? 
Yeah, I feel it's very effective if she, if like if I'm please, if I'm wrong, correct me. Because mm -hmm. based on my research, it's very effective as of this time. It's very effective, but people don't people don't really people can't really see it's effective because people don't really see it because some of these things are done outside courts. Yeah. So people don't really see it. So they say, oh, it's not really effective because it's out of court. So just because it's out of court doesn't mean it's not effective, and doesn't mean that things don't go down. Doesn't yeah. mean that they are not being protected or it's not very effective. So it's actually effective, but it doesn't mean that they, we can't still work on it to make it better. Yeah. But it's effective, though there's still room for growth. But it's effective. Yeah. So I have a question for you on that as well. All right. About the effectiveness, do people first of all before you, before we even know if it's effective, are people aware of laws like this? Yeah. Are they fully aware that when you create protect like this? Well, um, I think people have the basic understanding that um, if I sing a song, it's my own. Mm. Yeah. If I'm the one that uh, wrote the story, it's mine. So they have the basic understanding that creative works belong to them. But they don't really understand the full scope. For instance, they don't get the fact that someone is not supposed to sing a cover of your song without your permission mm -hmm. or without paying you publishing or something, uh, any form of royalties. Um, they don't understand the idea of license, and let me put it that way. To an extent, people already understand the concept of ownership. What they don't understand is the concept of license and the transfer of that ownership. Mm. So, well, people are not as ignorant as we like to think. The only difference is that the details are the problem. People know mm. they own stuff, yes. but they don't know how to own. and to what extent. Mm. So, I also wanted to say when it comes to legally protecting your content mm -hmm. it is something that anybody would want to do and you mentioned that somehow they know but they are missing the little details yes. so does this show that you know they're not actually paying attention to the legal part of you know their creative work they're only all about you know creating and not protecting what they've created well, um, I think you first of all have to look at it this way, in the sense that you can only um, be inattentive to something that you knew existed in the first place. Mm. So an average person in, I'll use Nigeria as an example, an average person in Nigeria does not know these laws exist. Mm. So you, you cannot really accuse this person of inattentiveness to laws that this person is not they aware no of. Mm. I mean, the, um, the legal system, or I'll give an ex not the legal system, rather the education system, I'll give an example. Um, when as early as primary school, they start teaching students um, music. But when they teach students music, they only teach them about the treble clef the and a lot of theoretical things. That's but all. they don't tell you anything about music rights. They don't tell you the fact that you can sell your songs. They don't mm. tell you the fact that when you, you record a song or when you sing a song, you shouldn't just show it to anybody because anybody can steal it. Yes. You get, they don't tell you things like this. They don't tell you that it's possible for you to restrict who can use it, how they can use it, for how long, and even where they can use it. So I, th I don't think it's right to put a um, blaming finger on them, like to say mm. that they, they're not um, attentive to these things. Mm. They simply don't know. Mm. And I, um, along with many other entertainment lawyers across Nigeria, have been doing a good job in the past three to four years, especially in um, educating as many people as we come across. So when I started my career, one of the first things I did the most was to educate my clients. It mm. wasn't really a question of um, getting them to pay for specific services that I actually offer. It was more of educating them on the services they needed in the first place <laughs> you get. So I, if anything at all, um, I will say the problem isn't inattentiveness, the problem is education. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. that's about right. And another thing again is when it comes to authenticating your work. Okay, I have a song. What's the next thing? Because you're saying, okay, I can protect my song, I can protect my licenses. And then, for instance, if it's content now, this is content. So yeah. if we want to protect our content exactly yeah. <laughs> right now, so we need to, first of all, register it, you know, with a certain commission here. We also need to not, because I was reading an article, and it says that if you actually want to protect your work, one thing you shouldn't do is actually post it on social media. Because there's a thing, everybody, everybody, you know, you have a social media platform that you are, you know, signed on to. Yeah. You have one as well. But how many of you actually read the terms and conditions? True. <laughs> you just tick the box and just yeah. keep going, right? But, you know, in the article, it says that when you go through these terms and conditions, if you upload your original work there, you're actually giving them royalty-free access, you know, license to do almost 
you know, post your work, reuse and share and all these things. So I want to ask more about authenticating your work. When I get this work of mine, what are the processes I need to go to? For instance, I have a content mm -hmm. and I want to, you know, authenticate it. Like I said, I know I mentioned the commission. Can you like expand on that as well? Okay, um, whenever you create a work, of course, you should be thinking of how to protect it. And um, apart from the regular legal and corporate way, which is registration, you also have to think of something called metadata. Yeah. So what metadata means is, it's actually very simple. It simply means your, um, let's say you get a form, your initial particulars, your personal details. So your name, um, the owner of the work, if it was licensed to somebody, the nature of ownership, is it? an exclusive license is it whatever the kind of thing and um, the name of the song is it under an album is it a single so small details like that actually the reason why they are important is because it helps trace royalties so okay. if you and you know the whole almost the most important purpose or rather there are two major reasons why you try to protect your work first of all is to guard your ownership then secondly is to make money mm. and what um, good metadata does for you is that it traces the ownership to you and once ownership can be traced back to you then royalties can also be traced back That's to you and that is actually quite dangerous a lot of um, nigerians and a lot of africans are actually victims of this they are there's something called black box royalties they are basically royalties that have not been claimed for a long period of time because the most prevalent reason is the fact that people don't know they exist so there's like money lying around there's like gold is kind of similar to um, the way Africa was pre-colonial times when we had a lot of like minerals in the ground. We're not aware of them. Yeah. So what happened was that when people who knew the value of these things came, came into the continent, they grabbed them. And years later, when we started discovering, not we still don't know 100% value of these things. When we started discovering the values of these things, we started crying wolf. So it's yeah. kind of similar to um, intellectual property. Now that um, we started seeing the value of it, or rather, it's now that we are trying our best to protect them. So, but the thing is, we need to know first. It kind of brings me back to the issue of education. Mm. So we actually need to know the value of these things. And one of the first ways is to protect your identity. That way, it doesn't cost, you have to also remember that multiple people have the same names. So when, for instance, if you have a stage name, if you upload your music on um, DistroKid and it gets distributed to like Apple Music and the rest yeah. and you upload it under let's say um, Tina but when you're submitting your name to your publishers you write just Tina what happens is that there's kind of this be a yes. yes so and you have to realize that there's something on the line and what is on the line money <laughs> so one of the She's important the ways of authenticating your um, intellectual property is to make sure that your metadata is correct. Mm. It's as simple as making sure that the name on your bank account is the same thing as the name on your ID. It's, it's also going to be the same thing as the name on some of your official documents and it's going to be the same name that you submit when you're filling your publishing form. That's if you have a publisher. The same name that will be on the form that you fill to your collecting society. So you have to be very careful. And if you have a stage name, you have to be very consistent where you use it. Yeah. It should be in your contract. So it's, it's good enough to say um, um, party A is the record label, party B is the artist. It's good enough to say, okay, the, the artist's name is Mr. S Smith John. But it's also important to also include that it is this stage artist, like is, this is my stage name. So, so there's something yeah. on that, I didn't mean to cut you off. There's okay. something on that as well. We have artists who change their name. You know, he changed his name. It looks strange when you, when you <laughs> yeah, look at I think it. I get it. <laughs> but how can he connect his identities together yeah. to make sure he doesn't lose money? Because he came out, he emerged with a particular, you know, he was being featured everywhere. Yeah. He emerged with a particular name and, and identity. Yeah. And now we knew him with that identity, and he has released song with that, ident mm. that now, identity. Now, there's something else I want to mention. So how do you connect that? It's the fact that that identity itself is a different kind of um, intellectual property, like I already mentioned earlier, mm. which is a trademark. Yeah. So if you're going to, you can't just change names um, randomly, because you, this is business. You had, it's like changing the name of your company overnight because you decided to, like, I don't know, for whatever reason. So because you know that if you change the name of your company, you're go it's going to affect contracts, right? So it's the same thing with your stage names. So what happens is that whenever you make changes like that, you have to update every single database you have ever submitted your information on. Mm. You have to make sure that everything rhymes. And mostly, it's usually the job of your publishers. Your publishers are those um, responsible of gathering your royalties and that's some specific kind of royalties okay so 
that's that's actually clear so Very obviously clear. i hope he changed his name everywhere yeah i, right. I, I think he would have to because when he changed his name pm like public figure online public. yes even like it was all over sites to aware people that okay there's a stage news i think that's part of what he um, loyal i'm sure he also has a team you know, yes. they should have taken care of everything. Yes. You know, and maybe if we bring so. him on the show, he'll tell us more about, you know, how he did that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you talked about leaving money on the ground. And mm -hmm. I want us to go to mm -hmm. the money now. Yeah. Let me just use one of Afrobeats. Afrobeats of the world. That's what everybody's saying now. And Let me use music artists, African music artists. How do they make their money? Mm -hmm. Let's know, first of all, are they making money? How do they actually oh, make the yes, money? Yes, they are making a lot of money. A lot? A lot? Yes. I, oh my goodness, there is a lot. Because especially now in this digital era, okay. where there are so many collaborations going on. Yeah. So that's even like double for them. So they make money through collaborations, through royalties, like you said. Like everywhere that their, their music is being played, a particular amount that goes to them, that's royalties, right? Yeah. So they make money through that. They make money through live shows. Like we think that all oh, live shows are just fun. They are not just fun. They are money. Like that's like that's them making money. You pay for yeah. these tickets. You, okay, let's want to just go see them. That's how they are cashing out with the money you're paying to buy the seats. You, like it's so funny how you go to like you see concerts and it like a seat or a table is three million, <laughs> five million. Mm. <laughs> they are cashing out. So yes, that's part of them. They also make money through on like online streams. Like, like when you keep streaming. And also to say, like, when we download, like, there are two kinds of, of download. Okay. We have legal and illegal download. Okay. So they That's don't something that Nigerians, we need to educate people on this thing. So whenever you download music or artist music outside of a site, like outside of the platform, for example, Spotify, um, Apple Music, that's illegal download. But when it's in that site where it is yeah. being registered and being owned, that's legal download. Let me use YouTube, for example. Yeah. Like, you know that, let me not call, let me not say, so some no, of you can't do, do that. Let me not do <laughs> it. Cannot do Period. That. But you, there, is, there is a way you can only from YouTube. So now when you do that, that's illegal. So that's the same way when, 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 like, when we do for music too. When it's outside of that Spotify, Apple, whatever it is, yeah. when you get outside, that's yeah. illegal. So that's one of the ways that they, they actually get money. But you can add more if you wish to. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I already mentioned, the primary ways of making money is through live shows, that's performances, through realities and realities uh, to get into realities is almost like a rabbit hole because yeah, mm -hmm. there are different kinds of so what if i just tie a rope around your waist and throw you down mm -hmm. that rabbit hole and yank you out before you know you go too far so tell us a little bit about royalties okay yeah. um royalties there are different kinds of royalties there's the mechanical royalties and then there's publishing mm -hmm. so um i'll just use simple words instead of attaching it to those technical words so basically there's royalties you get from the lyrics of a song using music then there's also royalties you get from the recording of the song so you, there's also royalties you get from the beats in the song oh. so royalties are all different yeah. and it's very and i'll just summarize it here because okay plus details are for my clients <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i see that market today but keep going anyway <laughs> so basically um like i said the importance of royalties is that you have to be able to trace them and this kind of royalties are collected by different kinds of societies. So, for instance, um, performance royalties are collected by specific societies. They are different. Like in the United States, we have BMI, we have ASCAP. In Nigeria, we just have one that collects every kind of royalty. So depending on where your audience is, depending on where your music is being played, you have to be conscious of the kind of collect societies they have there. Because it's not enough to just um, sign with it's a, a society that is in the United States or in just in Nigeria. What if most of your um, fans are from Uganda? What if yeah. most of them are from the Caribbean? So you have to be very conscious and be able to trace these different kinds of royalties. And usually it's best if you have a publishing house, a publishing company that you're assigned to, because a publishing company, basically what you do is that they sign you up to multiple royalty collection houses in these different um, localities. Because as an average person, you do not know the royal the collect societies that are in each um, country i'll give an example there was a collect society in nigeria that is no longer in existence the license has been revoked but while it was in existence um it wasn't there was a time it wasn't uh, the license had been suspended but it was still collecting royalties so only a publisher will know this technicality yes you as a person if you do your research you might just know okay this is the, this are the royalty collection so let me just sign to every one of them 
So some may not relate to you. Some may have unfavorable con um, contracts. Some may yeah. have exclusive contracts that stop you from signing with multiple people. So it's very important mm -hmm. for you to have a publishing house. They're sort of like a middleman. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of having people, like a lot of pe um, steps to be able to do these things. But the truth is that they have access to more information than you do. And they have a lot of people that can do legwork that you can't do. Yeah, and there's something you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Black box royalties. Yes. And, you know, being, can you explain that a little bit more? So it's kind of, it's, it's tied to what I just said. Yeah. You don't know the places, like, you don't know the places that have the, the kind of um, collective societies they have in those places. Yeah. So maybe, for instance, in the United States, you only signed um, your performance rights to okay. a performance rights organization. You didn't sign for um, other kinds of royalties. So what happens is that you collect those performance royalties and think, oh, I've collected my royalties, okay. you get, and you feel like a baller, not knowing that the mechanical rights that you have have not yet been collected. So those royalties, mm -hmm. what happens is that they are, they, they are just stuck in one place. So we don't, I do not have any authority to say where exactly they go to. Mm -hmm. yes. But one thing is for sure, when they are not recouped, they are called black box royalties. And sometimes oh. if a certain number of years have passed, I know that one of the PROs in America, you after one year, you, you can't recoup royalties that are older than one year. Mm. So yes. if I don't <laughs> reclaim my money wow. within, within a, year, a period, yes, it's gone. It's but gone. then again, it depends on the contract you sign. So the bigger the artist, the bigger his negotiating power. Wow. wow. So <laughs> that, oh, sorry, I have a question. Yes. Do they pay to sign up for um, for the different country? Thing? Well, to my knowledge, most of them are free. Mm, okay. Most of them are free. But if you are a very big artist, chances are they will come to you. <laughs> and then that's why I mentioned the issue of negotiating power. That then you have the power to be able to negotiate to your favor if their default setting is not something you like. Yeah, so this actually brings me, you know, brings us back to the importance of, you know, IP law, sorry, intellectual mm. property laws. Let's see if the acronyms yes. because, you know, that everybody knows what the intellectual property laws yes. because it can actually cause a ripple effect when you think about it. When a person creates something, imagine if it's like um, a brand now that has employees and mm. then your information gets leaked or somebody yeah. else takes it and uses it, you know, or takes your work and copyrights it before you are able to copyright it. You know, you're going to lose money, it's going to affect the employees and, you know, even the economy as well because money going going off or a company shutting down, you know, is cutting down on taxes as well because the government won't, you know, get the taxes. Besides this importance of intellectual property law, let's look at the challenges that some of all these artists, these creative people face when it comes to making money or getting recognized for their work compared to people in other um, countries? Okay, um, before I answer that, yeah. forgive me, uh, I just want to mention something. As you're asking a question, you said that if you don't register your copyright first. So the thing is, uh, according to Nigerian law, yeah. the moment you, your copyright is original and it's put in a fixed form, so if it's put in a fixed form, it can be a book that it was written in, or it can be that you recorded it at a studio. Once it's put in a fixed form, it is protected by copyright even before registration. Mm. So what registration does is that it gives you proof. It gives you evidence if you ever um, have to appear in court. Okay. But when it comes to trademark, trademark is a first come first serve basis, regardless <laughs> of that's like on the surface, right? Of course, there are exceptions to the rule. There are specific extenuating circumstances, but I just wanted to point that out. Now, um, as to the challenges that face um, intellectual property, like exploitation, or rather, um, commercialization. Yeah, I, <laughs> all creative artists, like, what are the problems they are Yeah, facing? I actually um, said um, commercialization instead of exploitation, because I've had issues where I use the word exploit, and a lot of people just felt negative. Yes. But basically, um, how to make sure that you're able to use it, and the kind of problems that we face, especially in a country like Nigeria. First of all, you have to look at the value of our Naira. Mm -hmm. And the value of our Naira is, is actually tied to our economic problems and it's tied to poverty. Mm -hmm. So I, mm -hmm. I I'll just use this an, as an example. The value of 10 streams in Nigeria is not up to the value of five streams in America. So what happens is that if you have like a thousand streams in Nigeria, I have 500 streams in America, the royalties that you receive from the 500 streams will be more than royalties you receive from the 1,000 yeah, streams because of the value. Now, the value, the specific context is, for instance, how much you pay for your subscription in Nigeria is not the same amount of money you pay for your subscription in America. So Spotify, for instance, Africa is different from Spotify, US. Yeah. So that's one thing. 
poverty is actually a problem. It's, it's kind of like a ripple effect. It's affecting and staining every aspect of our economy. That's one. Then number two, issue of security. Now, like you mentioned earlier, um, one of the means of making money is through performance and that's live, performing at live shows. So what happens when uh, a part of the country is plagued by extreme um, insecurity? Probably there are kidnappings in that area or yes. it's a different part where there are like killings, there's armed robbery, things like that. Traveling on the road is almost a no-no. So how can you take a road tour? Mm, that's yeah. like out of the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get, and that's like cutting a full arm of your or income. you could get attacked mid-show or something exactly. like that. <laughs> and it, yeah, it, especially the issue of getting attacked mid-show. Sometimes some people can just gather some bandits and say you're supposed to like pay them tax. If not, you will not continue with your show. And by the time you consider, yeah. consider how much you have to pay off people not to disturb you, how much are you earning? Exactly. Exactly. So when you think of things like that, you wonder why. It's very easy to point at the Nigerian industry and say, eh, Nigerian pe Nigerians don't like to do shows around and tours around the country, but you have to consider these things. Security is a very big problem. It's, it isn't just for when we are traveling to our village for Christmas. It's affecting every aspect of the economy. Mm -hmm. So the next problem is infrastructure. Um, an average person wants to create content. A random security man, a random banker, it is either they're funny or they're something, especially how um, the world is now. They are exposed to a lot of things, people around the world. So they want to create certain kinds of content. They have some kind of talents that they are probably not exhibiting in their nine to five. You get people want to do things, but unfortunately, there's no light. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know it sounds funny, but no, it's, it's very frustrating. Or imagine being on a live, sh um, or like a live stream, right? Yeah. And if I just takes lights and your background mm -hmm. just go, everywhere just goes dark. Actually, it's very, it's, it's very I mean, exactly. Yeah. So what happens now is that this person has reservations and probably will lose some opportunities because of that. Mm -hmm. Or worse, if you have lights, no network. Mm. So yeah, some of these things look really tiny and look like very tiny inconveniences, but they have a ripple effect. Mm. So what happens is that after a while, some people will no longer want to do business with you because they assume that you're not a serious person. Yes, that means that it was circumstances. Exactly, and that mm. will affect the industry as a large. Mm. So I, what happens is that um, live things are, are not as much, and it's that what you get a lot is um, pre-recorded things because, oh well, yeah. we can't control those things yet. Hopefully. Yeah, true. So let's talk about, like I said, Afrobeats to the world. There are a lot of collaborations going on, international co um, collaborations. We also have people being signed to foreign labels as well. Mm -hmm. We need to actually know, is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it both? What, it, what is it for anybody that is getting signed or that is making an international collaboration with anybody? Okay. Um, first of all, there's no answer to that. <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not a good no Why? bad. Why? Because every situation is unique. When mm. I say unique, um, what governs collaborations is contract. So what is inside the contract? Okay. And there are hardly two people that will write the exact same contract. You get, except it's one particular company that is handing out uh, multiple copies of the same contract to yes. multiple people. So what is the offer you are getting? Is, does it actually help you? For instance, you already have access to distributing your music by yourself. You already have access to aggregators like DistroKid, CD Baby, and the rest. Why do you need a company? Why do you need to sign a distribution deal with a company? Do you understand? Yeah. Like, you don't need it. So in that scenario, you you um, holding a piece of empty paper and holding a pen and snapping picture and posting on IG and saying, I just signed with the logo mm -hmm. and shaking a white man mm -hmm. does not actually help you. <laughs> so that's one. Number two, um, collaborations in terms of featuring on music. Mm -hmm. Is this actually, this artist actually going to um, introduce you to a new fan base? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. do you guys share the same kind of fans? You have to ask yourself that question. Yeah. And that issue is, Will this kind of person um, offend my fans? For instance, mm. if your fans are conservative yeah. and you bring a certain kind of yeah. artist in your music video, will you yeah. offend my fans? Will you reduce the income that I'm going to get from this music? So you have to consider all those things. It's not just enough to have somebody from a more developed country and take pictures, post on IG and feel cool. And probably, uh, feel, you understand my point. Yeah, you have to be very coming. specific. What exactly are you getting from this deal? Mm. So I'll give an example. Someone like CK that has recently blown he signed with Warner Music, and we can see that he's been exposed to a lot of countries. You can see the contacts that he's getting. You get you, the exposure is there. The results are showing. It's not something yeah, that you need to do any serious due diligence to be able to see the results. 
are out there. So you have to ask yourself, what exactly am I signing? Is it a record deal or is it actually just a distribution deal? Mm. Because you can distribute yourself. Or is it, um, a, is, is it a publishing deal? Are they going to help me get... You have to be very specific. What yeah. are they going to do for you? It's not just enough for you to be associated with them. And because another thing, again, being associated, like I mentioned, being associated with this com company, does it help you? Or do your fans not even know who they are? Do you yeah, get? Yeah. Because it's very possible that your fans are very clueless. So even if they see like one German name as a record company, like, eh, and so. Like, who are they? <laughs> they know what they do they, for you. Exactly. So you have to be very specific. So for instance, are they going to, if they're going to do publicity for you, where? Mm. What uh, market are they, are they going to take you to um, international shows? And in those international shows, are those people your ideal market? Would they enjoy your kind of music? Sure. If they won't, then you just wasted your time. I'll give an example of someone that did a very good job with this. So, um, Whiskey with his song Essence. He featured Justin Bieber. Now, a lot of people, especially on Twitter, were wondering why. Because they felt the original song was good enough. Yes. But the thing is, immediately he did that. He exposed himself to a whole new world. Of course... He was already, um, he had already brought Afrobeat to the world. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that just to be by introducing him to the world. No, if I say yeah, no, yeah. What I, when I say whole new world, I mean to his, to okay. Justin Bieber's own Fan fans. Base, yeah. mm. so, so some of them will obviously be hearing of Whiskey for the first time. True. And that person that did a good job with this is Drake. When he featured Thames on his yes, album, yes. what he did was that he bought a billboard in Lagos. That's so people that are not fans of. Um, Drake, when they see terms like he's on this album, or people that don't even like hip hop in the first place, yeah. they're like, okay, let me just hear that song because on Drake's album. And so, what he has done is that he has brought streams from, and he was very um, careful. He did something, he put it in Lagos, where her fans actually are. Mm -hmm. He didn't just put it in a random place. So, you can say that that collaboration was profitable yes. and that contract was good for him. But when you do it the other way, and <laughs> there is no real, you, you can't mm -hmm. see an arrow eye. It's just yeah. mouth. Mm -hmm. It's just probably paper. You get, you have to see actual conversion. So it is when you see that, that you can now make the decision and or you can now decide and say, this is this contract is good mm -hmm. or that contract is bad. And that's mm -hmm. why I said there's no one answer. Yeah, true. Because I was going to say that you actually covered it because yeah, when it comes to slavic, well, I call it that, slave-like, is that what <laughs> yeah a lot of people refer yes. to these as slave contracts, yes. contracts where yes. they don't even go through next thing you see um tussles here and there artists mm. versus their record label and then some people are trying to i feel i feel like i don't know if where i had this conversation before but that there's a particular artist that you have a deal you sign and your deal is okay you're going to release 10 albums under us until you're done releasing 10 albums. You're not going anywhere. Wow. Yeah. That's so, some, so that, like you said, there are some people that don't actually pay attention to the contracts. Mm -hmm. And then even in Nigeria as well. So when it comes to these issues, do you feel sometimes it's the labels that are aware mm -hmm. and, you know, deliberately want to take advantage of the artist or... It's the other side. It's the other well, way the around. thing is, as a lawyer, I've represented both sides. <laughs> and <laughs> <Okay, tell us laughs> both. Yes. Wow. So from my experience, what I would say is that um, everybody has a responsibility to understand what they're signing. Mm. Mm. So this is a contract. This is a legal contract. It's just like how everybody has um, a hospital they go to. So mm. you, even if you don't have a personal lawyer, you should at least have a law firm that you go to. Let them explain what's written there. And I think this so, sort of boils down to education. You can't blame the record labels are businessmen. They so are they not can, going to. So they can exploit anybody. It's not a question of exploitation when you are putting favorable terms to yourself. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, it's very easy to get overly emotional and say um, this is um, this is exploitative. And to an extent, there's actually a line you're not supposed to cross mm -hmm. as to how you treat another human being, definitely. But what I'm saying is that most times what happens is that this artist, the reason why you see this online um, dramatic public tussles is because this artist did not understand the expectations mm -hmm. that were had of them. And they did not understand what the label was supposed to do for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so when there's no right. clear, exactly. So yeah. when there's no clear understanding of, okay, this thing um, he's doing, this is what he promised to do. This is what this company promised to do for me, and they've done it. But your mind is, no, you're thinking of, I'm not yet as big as this particular artist, so you guys mm -hmm. are filled. Or no, yeah. I only became this big because of my own efforts, because yeah. of how I can sing. And so because of that, you guys do not have a right 
to ask for your money back. Or you want to leave early before like the exactly number of years. So it's not just um I I think it's to an extent it's unfair on both sides to say that a particular contract is bad. The reason I say so is because it's unfair on the um, company to say so because they were just negotiating the best contract for them. And on the artist, it's unfair to say that um the it's a bad contract because they were probably using the best opportunity available to them at that time. Mm. So most times what happens is um, this is what I say to everybody, get a lawyer. Yes, it's, it's you don't even, um, entertainment lawyers are not as many as I would hope they are in Nigeria. But get a lawyer. It's as simple as Googling it. Like, just say, entertainment lawyers in Abuja. Or even lawyers in Abuja. You can go on Instagram oh, and just say, I, I have met many clients that we, they just searched for entertainment lawyers in Nigeria. And that's how they found me. You get so it's it's really not as difficult. I mean, if you can make music, if you can pay for a recording session, I think you can go online and search for a lawyer. Honestly. And many times you notice that a lot of lawyers are willing to give you advice for free. If this, and if this lawyer doesn't give you advice, if you cannot afford this lawyer, move to the next one. Exactly. If you cannot afford that, and there are different payment structures in case it's a question of like I said, they, the money. They are, yeah, if they are, they are only taking opportunities that they think are the best for them at that time, it's usually because of lack of money. Mm. So what happens even if you can't? There are different payment structures. You can ask you can ask for a contingency fee, saying that if it works, this is how much you get, or a percentage saying that this, if this works, this is how much you will get. Oh, you get so like a negotiation. Exactly. So you should be able to negotiate with your lawyer too and say, okay, sir. This is how much confidence I have in this mm -hmm. thing. And you, you'll be surprised how many lawyers were willing to take the risk and go mm -hmm. for it. You get, yeah. And to an extent, it shows that you are proactive. I mean, if you think music is worth cracking your brain about and making. And I feel Honestly. as if I'm even being too um, um, unfair. I think I'm being too one-sided talking just about music. Same thing with film. If you think and this books. is good enough books, if you think this is good enough to write, if this is good enough yeah, to, enough to perform. yes, yeah. then I think it's good enough for you to talk to a lawyer. A yeah. simple t one hour or even a 10 minute conversation can go a long yeah. way. Yeah. So I don't think anyone's out to get anybody. Of course, there are some people that are out <laughs> to get people. I'm not yeah. trying to be naive, <laughs> but what I'm saying is you can't have that kind of mentality anywhere in the world. Yeah. You need to be able to protect yourself. You can only say someone's out to get you when you did a good job and it failed. Hmm. And I also think that some artists don't get a lawyer because probably they think that it's just a waste of money. Not yeah. knowing that mm. you're actually wasting money not getting a lawyer. Yeah. Because the lawyer will actually bring, like, it's, he, that person will bring to your notice the, um, the streams of income that you can actually get. Yeah, and so, there's yeah. something very important. A lot of people share lawyers with their employers. Hmm. You guys are on different sides. Like, if you read the contract, you guys are different parties. Oh, wow. Why are you having the same lawyer? Mm, that's very true. Tricky. It's like, yeah. okay, picture, like, just close your eyes and picture yourself in a courtroom. You guys are arguing before a judge. Are you guys <laughs> oh, are sharing just the same lawyer? Oh, wrong. <laughs> very so, wrong. like, if, if that is absurd, then mm -hmm. it should be absurd for you to use the same lawyer that the, that lawyer person that drafted that contract. Yes. How is lawyer supposed to look out for your best interest? Exactly. You say, oh my God, it's so good. You can sign it. <laughs> but sis, don't do it. <laughs> so always so have true. yours by your side. Yes, basically. You so I feel like we have, you know, really, really covered this. And we've, we've actually talked about it because the general topic is about African creatives and the law. And we took a little bit of, you know, we zoomed in on musicians because we know that it's going global. It's contributing a lot to the economy as well. And we looked at royalties. Thank mm. you. You didn't even go so, so <laughs> deep in the whole place. But we looked at the royalties yeah. and then the issues with intellectual property law, which means that it's not like people, it's not like it doesn't exist or it's not effective. A lot of people are not well educated about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for opening yeah. up about that. Oh my God. Very yes, we can have this discussion like the whole day <laughs> and not <laughs> stop. But I feel like we've really done justice to this. Thank you so much for coming. But there's something interesting I want you to tell us. Okay. Because we know law is broad. Yeah. Okay. And then when people imagine lawyers, they're like, oh, going to court to say, yes, boring, my lord. No, my boring. lord. Or yes. something like that. Yeah. Okay, that's a little. But why did you choose this path? It's an mm. intellectual property law. Well, um, to be honest, the major reason I chose it at first, or should I say, one big reason I chose is because it's interesting. Yeah. You, you get look, it. Look <laughs> it's actually interesting because you get to interact with a lot of creative people. So you're like seeing a lot of how they. Are, you can you can get to be a part of 
their creative process. Mm. And um, to be honest, I have always liked books. I'm a bookworm. I've always liked reading. Yeah. Of course, um, back in secondary school, it wasn't necessarily academic books. <laughs> but I've always been curious. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, in, um, the fact that I like things that have a story. Mm, so, yeah, fiction. Yes. Anything that has a story to it. So even if it's a documentary, if it's music, or even if it's an artwork, I like had I have always had that thing, affinity for things with stories. So um, being in class in 400 level and coming to understand that these things have their own special kind of law that protects them, and oh, yeah, I'm going into it deeply and realizing, oh my God, this is like a whole new world. And I just, I said, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was risky at first because I didn't get to see a lot of role models I could look up to yes. in Nigeria. And the structure, actually. I feel like yeah. there's no structure for it yet. But there were a few. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of research, especially back when I was in law school. I did a lot of research and I was able to find a few of them. And I reached out and they, were, they have actually been a very good help so there's mm -hmm. actually a network and we're actually um trying our best to also encourage other law students so if you're a law student intellectual property law is worth giving a shot even the um tech that is in all the rages practically entertainment law so it's not entertainment law sorry it's intellectual property and corporate law it's fact almost the same thing yeah so i feel mm -hmm. like even with the emergence the way the creative industry is growing the yes. projections i feel like on. very soon there would be a structure for entertainment law itself because a lot of people will be looking to protect mm. what they've created. Actually, to an extent, especially in terms of education, there is actually a green structure right now. I'll give two examples. Um, there's the famous artist manager, Godwin Tom. He used to be Whiskey's oh, manager. Oh, music He's, business. Yes. Yeah. He has a music business academy. that I. It's something that I've recommended to so many people. Mm. Some people I know personally have gone there, and they have I've heard a lot of testimonies, especially for artist managers. So that's already been done on his, at least he's pulling his weight on that end. He's giving a lot back to the community, actually. Then another thing is, uh, there's a, a textbook, the first entertainment law textbook in Nigeria. <laughs> yes. It's written by Michael. The first. Okay. No, the we're first celebrating, ever. but how is it the first? It's literally, that's to show you how novel this area of law is. Mm. It has always been um, intellectual property law. So it has always been copyright, yes. patent, industrial design, trademark. But focusing on the creative industries, that is what entertainment law is about. So it's, it's an entertainment law is not just IP law. That's, it's not just intellectual property. Yes. It's also the corporate world, how to organize your company. It's also criminal law, how not to get into trouble, posting yourself smoking yes. weed and some other things yeah. online. online. You can break your contracts if you, oh, for instance, that People guy- People have lost contracts yeah, actually. For instance, the, like this, the athletes in the UK or in Europe, I can't remember yeah. which country exactly, that was filmed kicking a cat. He lost his endorsement. Yes, that was that. Yeah. Yeah. Even exactly. when some people make some kind of comments online, you know, for you know, it's brands are fun. pulling, are pulling away Exactly. From you. So those things are like criminal law. Those things are not specifically intellectual property law. So this body of laws together mm -hmm. that service the entertainment industries, the creative industries, it's called entertainment law. And the first textbook that talks about the Nigerian reality of entertainment law was written by Michael Dugiri, and it was just it's published last me. year. Wow. Yes. Yes. So, so just good. so you know, th we're, we're recording this in 2022. So yes, it was released in, yeah. Yes. So it was released in 2021. 2021. So yeah. whenever you watch this, <laughs> know that we're so excited because yeah. the first entertainment <laughs> book just yeah. Came out. A few years from now, it's going to like there are going to be like many a other textbooks. More. So it might not mm. seem like a big deal later on, but right now it is. And so whenever people say there's no structure, I'm like, calm down. A structure is being built. Yeah. Mm. Of course, not everybody is in cohorts with each other, but everybody is building in so their own mm. different capacities. As I'm talking to you now, almost um, half of the investors in Nigeria have IP clubs. You get there are clubs where, and it's not just for law students. It's mm. for anybody who wants to learn about intellectual property. Like mm. just legit clubs on their own. I have spoke. I've been invited to speak to a couple of them. I've only spoken on one so far. And to be honest, it's 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 the the structure is really growing. It's really big. I have to remember something that people that are going to be um, holding the structure firm. Uh, still in university. <laughs> yeah, true. Yes. The future of but tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not that far in the future. But my point is, the structure is being built. So mm. let's have more faith. 
okay. patience. The okay. main Nigeria. I, I have the faith. <laughs> I always have the faith. So I'm just imagining that you fast forwarded to this point and you're hearing a lot of, about intellectual law, IP law. It's, if you're a creative, I know you're a creative person. There's something you've created or there's something mm -hmm. you might want to create. If you want to protect it, this is a way that you can go about protecting it. And that's what we're talking about here. How African creatives can protect and authenticate their work and reap all the benefits yes. that are due to them yes. for everything that, that they've created. Thank you so much, Tim, for coming thank on the you. show. Wow. I'm actually and happy to be here. <laughs> wow, I know, like, you. I don't know, you look so excited you really talking about it. Like, you can read the passion <laughs> yes, on her, right? Yeah. So thank you so much. We thank really you. needed you. you were, there isn't anybody, you know, that would have been more appropriate for this topic thank you. than you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. But uh, this is State of the Culture. Okay. You know, <laughs> and this is a place where we like to promote African culture. Yes. Now you've already said hello to us earlier. So how about you tell us goodbye or anything you want to say? Okay. You know, um, so we can go. So you remember Tem Larry, say taxin. That means my name is Tem Larry. Goodbye. <laughs> that was actually short. <laughs> Anyways, thank like you so much for calling me. <laughs> yeah, you can, you know, I'll check, get, check this one out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget to download the Izesan app, please. It's on your iOS and Google Play Store. You'll learn a lot. Trust me. My name is Angiatin Justina. I'm you. your host and Hi. my co-host. And my name is Jerry Kilichi. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode. Have a great time.